directly from uh, one earlier. So reading your book, this idea that actually Russia may have been a greater threat to our long-term interest in Germany, we were worried what would happen in, in India and the rest. And, and as you say, for a while we decided that it would be better to be Russia's friend than our enemy. I mean, I understand that in the short run, but I don't, I don't understand what Gray's long-term strategy was. If, if it, the war had been over by Christmas and Russia had won, triumphed and destroyed Germany or seriously weakened her, did Gray think we would stay long-term friends with Russia? Uh, well, and that well, that threat wouldn't re-emerge, Russia would be more emboldened, not less. It well, seemed a very short-term strategy. Well, that's a very interesting point, that, you know, where's the long-term strategy? Um, you look in vain for long-term strategies anywhere in Europe at this time. I mean, this is one of the shocking things, is the lack of really serious, you know, there are no plan Bs, there are no exit strategies, there's no long-term. But Gray, nevertheless, does make quite a good case for intervention before the House of Commons on the 3rd of August, when he says, you know, he makes three points. One of them is about Belgian neutrality, um, but that is, that, and that's a point with a lot of moral resonance, which gives him, it puts the public, the British public, into the bag. Um, but it's not the reason that the British government decided to go to war. The, real, uh, the, the, the two real reasons, um, actually one of them is more real than the other, the less real one is the argument that we are effectively already friends with France. And the proof of that is that France and Britain are collaborating on naval defence policy. The French have sent half their navy down, uh, away, they've denuded their northern coasts and handed them over to British for British the British Navy to defend. Um, and once you've made an agreement like that, you have a moral obligation to your friend. And the question Gray asks is, do Britons want to be people who let their friends down in a tough spot? And the answer, of course, is no. The third one, the third argument he makes is the, is the strongest and the, the one based on cool reason of state. And that's the one that involves Russia. And that is, let's think about what happens uh, if this war, uh, you know, if, if either of these two sides wins. If the Germans win, we've got a Napoleon on the continent, which we don't want, a hegemon who will doubtless also control the low countries. Uh, if, we do, if the Russians and the French win, well, uh, our imperial possessions will be n denuded of, of defense. There's no way that northern India can be um, defended against a Russian land army. And so it would be the nightmare, again, of the, the great game, um, but you know, under much worse circumstances. And so um, that seems to me, in terms of a kind of cold-blooded uh, um, raison d'etat, not a bad argument um, for intervention in the, within the sort of framework of the, of the time. And that's the argument that Gray makes. That's about as long-term as it gets, I'm afraid. 